Um, I have something really cool to share with you today. I'm going to show you how you can really easily make your own swirly, whirly, scrolly, rolly logo. Um, there's a lot of these around at the moment and um, they, they are just really, really lovely. As usual, this video is not scripted in any way. Um, I, <laughs> I probably really should start scripting my things. Um, so you have to put up with me rambling. So here's a couple I knocked up um, for my LSP uh, because I really wanted to join the Scrolly Rolly Club and I can't with Lemon Sky Photography because our logo is very well embedded now, um, people really recognising it. So with LSP I had the chance to create my own logo like this. I tried a few times myself using my, uh, my Wacom in um, Illustrator, you know, drawing to create an EPS file, but I'm going to show you how you can do this in Photoshop yourself really easily. Um, I toyed with keeping this to myself because really this is <laughs> almost too good for me to share. So, the way you do this logo, it probably will take you about 10 minutes and you can do it with a brush set. I discovered this brush set by chance um, on a Facebook post and this is the Sugarland brush set by Something French. The website address is www.somethingfrench.co and I'll pop this underneath as a link um, which you can see. So you go onto her website, um, up here to pre-made, and scroll all the way down until you come here to the Sugarland script set. And here we go. So you get all of these lovely swirly letters. Um, they're all lowercase, which I think looks really, really beautiful. Um, if you want uppercase, she also has a set. Um, I think it's, let me just see, ink ink letters and symbols these these look a little bit more capital if you want some capital letters but i stuck with uh, sugarland so as you can see here it's a brush set and i'm going to show you exactly how to use this and how you can create your own uh, scrolly handwritten script logo here's a couple of her examples here um, and they are just beautiful she does offer a logo design as well i've seen on her site but this sugarland um, script set is reduced down to ten dollars i mean seriously ten dollars for this, 67 brushes, and she's got little little dandy, oh, they're just beautiful, the little hearts and bows, there's a little butterfly cameras, oh, they're just absolutely gorgeous. So you add it to cart um, and buy it, download, it's an instant download, very similar to my LSP actions, and you will find this in your downloads folder. So let me just find my downloads folder for you. Um, so when you get it, I'm on a PC. Um, at the moment and you will have to excuse me because here we go so you get it like this in a zip um, I have just built <laughs> I was in flat pack hell last night building a new computer desk and it's all a bit kind of all over the place so you'll have to excuse me so you can download it here um, the Sugarland script set and you will get this up in a folder like this if you're on a Mac you come up here or on a PC you can come here She's got instructions here, um, but all you really need to do is see here the Sugarland script.abr. An ABR file is a Photoshop brush um, preset file. So you double click this, and this should now show in your Photoshop brush preset. So you come up here to brush, right click, and you scroll down, and here they are. Here they all are. So I'd recommend starting with a new document. You want it to be quite big because. Um, there's no sense in making yourself a lovely new logo that's too small to do anything with apart from use on the web. You might want to use it um, in the long run to create a sign or um, to, you know, stick on a stick on um, the front of your studio or something like that. Obviously, a lot of people use Illustrator for this because you can create a vector logo file which can be scaled at any size. We're going to be using Photoshop. So I'm going to make um, a really big, I'm on inches and I'm going to go for 30 by 30 inches. If you can go bigger, then I would recommend it. Okay. So right now I'm on a white background. I'm going to get the brush and set it to, let's go for a nice grey. Obviously set this to kind of whatever you want your colours to be. For me, um, I'll go back on it again. I chose this lovely teal blue because that's my LSP colour. But um, you can see, let me get a white background up. I've also created um, PNGs to go over the top as well if I, um, you know, if I need them and I'll show you how to do that. So, without further ado, let's get started here. So you're on the brush, or here you can hit B for brush, right click and choose your letter. So let's say that we are, oh I don't know, something like, um, uh, let's say PB photography or something like that. Um, I obviously can't go through all of the variations because <laughs> we could be here all day. So opacity all the way up, 
float all the way up. The first thing you want to do, you want every letter on a new layer so you can move them around. So new layer, uh, let's call this one P. And I'm going to right click and find the P. They're in alphabetical order and you will see each one you have one that's got a scrolly tail and one that is um, less of a scrolly tail. So it all depends on the distance you want between your letters. So let's make this a little bit bigger and go here. There we go, P. And let's create a new new layer and call it B. So I right click and find B. I'm going to go for the B with the tail. So what you want to do is line this up with where the last one, um, you know, leaves off. So let's say here. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? I'm in love. I love these. You can um, hit Control T or Command T if you're on a Mac to transform. So let's say, let's put them there. And something else that's really cool that she has, I'm going to create another new layer, is these lovely little um, kind of embellishes you can add on. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to crop this and make this um, a bit of a different size so we have a bit of width on the ends. I'm also going to show you in a minute how I put mine in a circle because that looks really lovely. Okay, so let's call this uh, left swell. Okay, and get on your brush and right click. And down here at the bottom, you'll see she's got these lovely swirly bits you can add on. So let's pop um, that one. If you click a couple of times, it will be, um, you know, harder. You can resize this however you want. So we could put this heart here. And what you can do because you're on transform is you can kind of drag it around to fit where you want it to go. So it lines up beautifully. And let's make another one. Right swirl. Okay, we don't really need a swirl here because I've already got one, but just so I can show you, we could have um, this little curly whirly thing. Or um, we could have a heart. She's all a little butterfly look. There's a little butterfly, so we could pop a butterfly on if butterflies are your thing. Which looks really sweet, so I'm just going to line that up there. And how cute is that? And uh, I mean, how long have we been recording? A few minutes? And uh, we already have something that really resembles a very professional, beautiful logo. And, um, you know, you could just grab a, um, a font here and write... Um, well, I can't think of anything for PB, so I'm just going to do PB Photography. And we could just stick that wherever you want. And I mean, I think it looks beautiful. And that is how you can create your own scrolly rolly, swirly, flancy, fluffy logo um, for your business. Super, super easy. No drawing, no nothing involved. And you can, if you're feeling uh, particularly kind of um, good on Photoshop, you can do things like you can warp. I'm going to get a marquee tool. Um, if, say for example, these don't quite line up here, which I'd recommend coming in, we could always pop um, a layer mask on the B and get a normal brush. I'm on caps lock. Okay, so get a normal brush set to black and we can pop a layer mask on the P. You see the P is kind of coming here, so I'm just going to delete that and it's gone. And then I can inch the B up a touch so it lines up. I would really recommend lining things up properly. Um, so yeah, basically that is how you can create your own swirly um, handwritten script logo in Photoshop. Now let's talk about putting it into a circle. I'm going to put this into a group. Let's call this logo. And I'll show you how you can quickly create a circle. So I'm going to hit new layer. Let's call it circle. This is, now there are a million, oh, I didn't write that right, did I? There are a million and one ways you can create a, um, a circle outline in Photoshop. This is just one way. Up here to Marquee and go to Elliptical Marquee. Hold down Shift and you can draw a perfect circle shape. Okay, so get that in the middle. And now I'm going to go to G, which is gradient here. Paint bucket tool and fill it with whatever colour. So we now have a black circle. What I want to do is... First off, I want to get that grey colour back, which you would normally save that. I'm going to take the fill down so we can't see it anymore. And I'm going to double click it, and that will bring up the layer style box. Go on to stroke, um, change your colour to grey, for whatever colour you're doing your logo. It may be white, it may be pink, whatever colour you want. And just change the size until you're happy with the thickness. So there we go. 
there is our circle and we can always go back on this and change the thickness even more if we want to so it's fully editable which is what I like and now here's our logo let's just pop that in the circle simple now what about getting your text to come around the circle like I have as you can see here I have text written around the circle I'm just going to move this logo around just a little bit here okay so select the circle again I just did that by command and clicking it um, I'm controlling clicking if you're on Mac command click and now what you want to do is create a new layer and come here to the selection you want to be back on marquee and right click and you want to make this a work path okay so that has now changed your circle to a work path if you click on the um, text and hover over you will see it changes so there it's in a circle and there it's in a little line so you right click that and now you can write around the circle um, so what should we write PB photography, let's stick a bullet in there. Oop, that's my fault for um, <laughs> using my alt code wrong. Okay, like I said, this isn't scripted. Okay, you can, oh dear, you have to excuse me, like I said, I'm not scripted at all. Okay, so I'm on capital 149 to create a bullet. I'm holding down alt 0149, it creates a bullet. Um, newborn. Maternity, family, and how about your contact number? And I don't know, website. Okay, so now we have some writing, but as you can see, the writing is on the outside of the circle. And what we want to do is get that onto the inside of the circle. And to do that, we need to drag it in. So I'm going to click here on the path selection tool. And you can see there, there I've got an arrow. If I come up to the text, it's got kind of a cursor with two arrows on it. I'm going to hold that and just drag it in. So there we go. It's now on the inside. So now, if I just go back onto any other tool, I can kind of, you know, get onto free transform and I can move this around the inside of the circle as much as I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this um, text a little bit bigger. So it starts to fill. I'm going to um, bring the spacing a little bit more. And I'm going to pop a bullet point in um, between the two there. Okay, and I'm just going to fill the spacing until it fills the circle. There we go. So now one last thing. I'm going to hit free transform and make it a tiny bit smaller so it's a little bit of a gap around the circle. So there we go. That's how you can create a circle. And like I said, you can hit free transform and you can move it around until it's, you know, happy wherever you want it. You can also do two of these and make this one come the other way because right now it's upside down. With mine, I made these upright and then this upright. I did two separate ones. So that is how you create a, um, a swirly handwritten logo in Photoshop in minutes super super quick and obviously you can play around with this until you're happy with however it looks the great thing about this is you can just do it as many times as you like you can try it as many times as you like you can completely adapt and adjust this and when you think about how much you'd actually you know pay somebody to design a logo for you that you're that you're stuck with this one you can go on there and you can, you can change it you can tweak it you can move it you can um you can warp it you can even like so say here i get a marquee tool and um, say I wanted to make this a bit rounder, I hit transform, warp, and I can just start, you know, moving this about myself if I wanted to make that a bit smaller and rounder, for example. So you can do absolutely whatever you like because these are brushes. The only advice I'd be is start nice and big, make sure it's big, and when you're done, if you want to save it as a transparent PNG, just make the background disappear and save it as a PNG file and that gives you a transparent web file. You can also copy it and make a watermark brush. If you look through my blog, you will see how you can make a watermark brush with this logo. Um, you can make all different colours, all different shapes, all different sizes. You can literally, the possibilities are endless. So, just to recap, that is the Sugarland script brush set from somethingfrench.co. 
And as I said, I, it was almost too good for me to share that with you. I wanted to keep it all to myself, but those that know me will know that I don't do that. And if I find something that's worth sharing, I will always share. Um, and that's on sale for $10, so it's too good to pass up. So that is how you can make your own scrolly, um, I, I never know what to call them really, handwritten, scrolly, kind of curly, whirly, scrolly, rolly logo in Photoshop.